Hello, my name is Jason Smith. I'm originally from sunny California, the Golden State, living here in beautiful Beijing, city of museums, to talk to you about what do Chinese people think of China? You hear all the time in the West these bizarre accusations that Chinese people are oppressed and that hate their government. Is this the truth? What do Chinese people really think about China? Now, firstly, I have been living here in China for about 11 years in Beijing and in Wuhan. I lived in Wuhan one year during the pandemic. I have thousands of friends that I've made in China, and my career has taken me all over Beijing and Wuhan, and I've met lots of foreign people from Europe, Canada, and Chinese people who love living here in China. A lot of people are not going to take anecdotal evidence, evidence from me as a person. So I wanna tell you by the data so that you can learn for yourself from experts, from expert statisticians, and other kinds of experts around the world. Well, from 2021 to 2022, the data was released in 2022, and the data was collected in 2021, they found that Chinese people trust their government at 91%. This isn't data from the Chinese government. This is data from a Western institution that has been around for almost a century, at least since the 1960s, saying that when they surveyed Chinese people, and they surveyed them across different cities, they found that 91% of them have very high trust in the central government, in the CPC. And in the United States in that same year, 2021, the report released in 2022, 39% of people trusted the central government. There are lots of data points. Uh, it's also been graphed by Statista, one of the other outstanding institutions for data collection and gathering that is used by university students and some professionals as well showing that this is the data point. Now, <clears throat> it is 2023, you might add. So maybe that data has changed. In fact, it has. So the data released in January of 2023 for about November 2022 shows that 89% of people in China trust the Chinese central government versus 43% in the United States. And I have mapped that for you so you can see the 23 countries that have been that were members of this study, that not all countries were studied by Eidelman because they wanted to focus in on some countries really intensely and really well. And so this is what it looked, trust around the world looks like. Sorry, Argentina, it doesn't look like it's going so well for trust in government in your country. And I would say some of these red and yellow points, not so great either, but you can see that in China, trust is extremely high. Okay, you don't know Eidelman and you don't know me. You've probably heard of Harvard. It's a university, I believe, kind of global, kind of famous. What did they say? Well, according to longitudinal research, that means research that takes place over many years, from 2003 to 2016, according to Harvard, we're talking Harvard now, 93% over that period of time have strong trust in the central government and support for the central government. That is according to Harvard, 93%. The Harvard Gazette reported 95.5% in 2016, and more recently in 2020, for the year of 2020, Harvard Business Review showed that the Ash Center at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, 95% of Chinese people uh, trust their central government, are satisfied with Beijing government. Why is this the case that all of these very prestigious institutions, Statista, Eidelman, Harvard, all say that Chinese people trust their government? Could it be that they do? Why would that be? Perhaps you've heard about the Chinese initiative to eliminate poverty. Absolute poverty, not poverty. So that, are there poor people in China? Yes. But are there people that are starving in China? No. So absolute poverty, as defined by IMF and World Bank, has been eliminated in China. So this has been a centuries, millennia long uh, hope for the Chinese people. And over the last 30 or 40 years, an enormous amount of work has gone into completely eliminating all absolute poverty from China. And this was achieved in 2020. What about healthcare? <clears throat> there is practically universal healthcare 
access in China, unlike in some other countries you may know about. Quality housing. Everyone has access to housing. Housing is very affordable, especially in second, third tier uh, cities where it's extremely accessible to get a new, nice, modern home. What about high-speed rail? The United States has no high-speed rail. They they claim there's a little bit, but it actually doesn't meet international standards. China has 42,000 kilometers of high-speed rail. 42,000 kilometers of high-speed rail. I've ridden in it. I, you can take a coin and put it in the window and it will not fall over. It is so smooth. And some of it, most of it, travels at 350 kilometers per hour. So you don't even need to take a plane and the high-speed rail runs on time. Planes, maybe there's a delay. There's not a delay with the trains. You have a train at nine from Beijing and you're going to arrive at 11 in Shanghai. Guess what? You get on the train at nine in Beijing and you arrive at 11 in Shanghai. Uh, economic growth. China's growth from 2013 to uh, 2021 was 38.6 of all global growth, more than the entire G7 combined. That's Japan, the United States, UK, Canada, etc. All lumped together, they were not as much as one country's economic growth, China. Uh, you can see from this chart from the IMF that China's growth is expected to be three to four times greater than the United States in the year 2023. So the next time you hear someone say, China's collapsing, no, they're wrong. Maybe don't trust that source of information. Environmental protection. A lot of people will say there are no birds in China, sorry. There, and there are plenty of birds, obviously, but China actually has grown more forest cover than any country in the world over the last 30 years. And that's both naturally regenerating forests, that's reforestation, and planted forests, that's afforestation, where they're literally making the deserts smaller. What about energy? China's investment in transition energy, that is energy that is renewable and green, is far greater than any country in the world. In fact, it's greater than the United States, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Japan, uh, the Republic of Korea, India, Spain, and Italy put together. That's how much investment went in 2022 from China into these forms of energy. NASA has confirmed the forest growth for those of you who say, I don't trust that Chinese data. So this has been confirmed by scientists at NASA. If you have a problem with NASA, I'm sorry, there's no argument for you. Global respect. So people in China have respect for their government because their government is respected around the world. Here is a map of the BRI members, the Belt and Road Initiative members around the world, which are, are about three quarters of all countries in the world are members of the BRI. And in fact, China's main trade partners are pretty much everyone. So if you look around, even the countries like the UK, the United States, and Germany, where some politicians, some of the time are like, well, we're gonna decouple or whatever, they're actually increasing trade over time. <clears throat> 2022 to 2023, idle and trust barometer. 65% of people say, my family and I will be better off in five years compared to the US, where it's 36%, about half. Okay, I've mapped that here. You can see who's doing well and who maybe needs more hope. So the next time you hear people talking about, oh, China not satisfied with their life, they're so oppressed, why do they love their government more than twice as much as Americans? More than twice as many as a percentage of the total amount of Chinese people love and are satisfied with their government than Americans. The world often looks to America as a beacon of hope, but actually Chinese people are far more hopeful, twice as hopeful. I would say if you're watching a media source and they say the Chinese people are oppressed, you can't trust that media source. At least you can't trust it when it's talking about China because research at the top universities and by the top people around the world are telling a very different story. And me, me and my friends who live here in China, a lot of us don't ever want to leave. I've got a green card and I plan on staying China forever. I love it. It's amazing. Thank God I moved to China and found out what it's really like for myself. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.